It is the final stretch. We're nearly there. I'm here in Norwich to talk to Labour's Clive Lewis. He's a friend of mine. He's also standing to keep the seat. Now, this has been quite a roller coaster of a campaign, to say the least. It's been a roller coaster of two years since the last general election. Still haven't recovered from that one. Uh, so, I want to talk to Clive. How's it looking on the ground? Where next for Labour? What does he think about the manifesto, uh, Labour's chances, and what happens after this election? So here we are in Norwich, mm. and I was wondering, Clive, given you're standing to, uh, to be the MP again in Norwich South mm. for Labour, have you had any, any thoughts on the pedestrianisation of Norwich City Centre? <laughs> I can't believe you just bolted that one at me, you scumbag. Do you think, because um, uh, there's a problem with I, access I, I, to Dixon's. I often lay awake at night wondering about the pedestrianisation of Norwich. <laughs> So Theresa May, when she called this, she was feeling pretty strong and stable, wasn't mm, she? She was. And the whole point for her was she was going to crush the opposition in this country. That was her aim. Whatever she said about the premise of the election, that was it. They were like, we're going to get an absolute stonking majority. What's gone wrong for them then? First of all, there's the old expression, pride goes before a fall. And their hubris and their arrogance, I think, hasn't played out too well for them. Um, but secondly, you've got to turn up if you want to have a resounding victory. And actually, what they've done is they've produced a manifesto, which I think just spoke of absolute dripping mm -hmm. arrogance and taking the British public for granted. You know, you normally develop a manifesto, uh, or the Tories do, develop a manifesto that you spend um, of promises that you then spend five years breaking. They didn't even start with the promises. They started with the thin gruel of hopelessness. Unless the polling is completely wrong, and that is a big caveat. How have Labour turned this around? I mean, David Butler, who is a eminent pollster, going back, he's covered every election since 1945, he said there's no precedent for this. The Tories have set themselves on fire. That's helped, no, no doubt. But actually, when you talk to people on the doorstep, what even, you know, Labour activists, many of them who haven't been the biggest fans of Jeremy Corbyn, people have said this manifesto is offering people hope. And I think after Brexit, after Trump, after the threat of Le Pen, you've got climate change, you've got terrorism, People are looking for a change of direction, something which isn't just about ameliorating the worst excesses of the Conservative Party. It's about a different vision for where our country goes. What Jeremy Corbyn and what this manifesto has done, it has reminded people what the Labour Party mm. came into existence for. Came into existence for working people and to represent working people. And it's so easy to talk to people about this on the doorstep because so often you get, mm. you're all the same. We don't get that. Do you know what it's like? It's like when you get bits of optimism, you just want to get a fire extinguisher in my case. You go, <laughs> stop it, don't dare to dream. Well, let's be realistic though. You know, look, we've still got the fight of our lives. Yeah, massively, and, and, yeah. You know, look, the odds are still, massively, the stacked odds are still massively stacked against us and we don't know what will happen. But what I do know is that our party and that people in this country have kind of caught on to the fact that there is another way. Mm -hmm. There can be a different way. And that actually sometimes, you know, the audacity of hope can work. <laughs> One of the big reasons Labour's done a lot better than expected is younger voters. Mm. But some would go, well, they're not going to come out and vote. Yeah. What, what you, is that going to happen? Am I being fatalistic? Uh, look, is there a shift? There, there, I think there has been a shift, but it, it depends on how big a shift that is. I mm. think it's a matter of degree. I think talking to people here, there definitely seems a sense from the people that we engage with, a genuine sense that people want to vote because this is the key thing, they genuinely feel that there is something tangibly different on offer and they've been caught up in that. There's, there's definitely a hunger, there's a feedback coming back at us, which is that they want to vote, they want to make a difference. And I just hope that we can. Let's give this as a hypothetical. Mm. Labour get 35% of the vote, which is what Tony Blair got in 2005. But the Tories, unlike in 2005, get much higher. The UKIP surge means that Labour lose, I don't know, 30, 40, even 50 seats. What happens to the leadership then? There will be the voices that say that Corbyn has to go. I think, to be quite frank, one of the th there's a couple of things that have happened this election. One, Jeremy Corbyn's been able to come into, come into his own. He hasn't been in Parliament being lambasted by the media, being screamed at at the PLP. To be quite frank, sometimes I'm quite embarrassed. It's like a lynch mob in there. If that doesn't affect your mojo, your confidence, I don't know what would. He's been allowed to get on with things. You know, Jeremy is Jeremy. He isn't perfect. No one is. But he's actually been able to be himself. And I think, actually, what you can see now, when we as a party aren't tearing strips out of each other, mm -hmm. we look a lot more attractive. Mm -hmm. The guy's won two leadership elections. Let's give him, after this leadership campaign, 
let's see what happens, but let's just give him the ability, the chance to do what he thinks needs to happen. Mm. I just think if we lose after the election, the last thing I want to see is to form a circular firing squad and start um, you know, taking each other out. I think people are tired of the Labour Party tearing chunks out of each other. We've shown, we've seen with a manifesto that is probably the most left-wing manifesto since 1983, but it's left-wing populism. We've shown how you can inspire people, how you can give people hope. I just hope that other people in our party, mm. some of the naysayers, actually say, oh, hold on a second, maybe we should learn something. Maybe there's a little bit of humility that we should actually learn something. And actually being bold sometimes can pay dividends. Because and I think that's what he's reminded us of, who we are, mm. what this party came into existence for, wasn't to kind of skimp and tiptoe. It was mm. actually come in, be bold and stand up for working people. And that's what this manifesto does. It's not perfect. No. I'd like to see other things in it, uh -huh. but it's a good starting point. Yeah, I have to say that. I mean, just personally, I mean, <laughs> He's defied all expectations. It'd be wrong of me to say he hasn't defied my own completely. I was, you know, we don't know what the result will be, but at the moment, as things stand, I was wrong, wasn't I? But we all judge politics in a bubble, don't we? You, you, yeah. Well, you, uh, I mean, look, no one's been right. I mean, I don't. I, we've so all, I'm interviewing you here, everyone, not, not the other way around. Sorry. <laughs> bit, we've all had. Like, everyone's had their doubts. I mean, I know. I know people who are hardcore Corbynistas who have said to me they've had their doubts. Of course, I'm sure Jeremy's had his doubts. Yeah. Who wouldn't in this climate, in, this, in these conditions? But the one thing we understand now is that we're going for a period of political transition. We're leaving the 20th yeah. century into the 21st. New situations, new political arena, and it's pretty unpredictable. A lot of the old mechanisms, a lot of the old analyses just simply don't stack yeah. up. So I think what we should learn from this is actually anything's possible. That, I mean, with that manifesto, those policies won't go anywhere now, will they? No. And I think what Jeremy and the Labour Party have done is they've put a standard down, mm -hmm. which I think not just not just members, mm -hmm. but the public. It is popular with the public as well. Mm -hmm. Don't just take my word for it, but you just have to speak to people on the doorstep. Mm. If you ended up where Labour didn't win, but the Tories got a similar result as last time, or only increased the majority a bit, when the whole point of this whole exercise, spending weeks fanning around with this, rather than focusing on Brexit negotiations, as Theresa May said, she was just being distracted from by the election, she called. Um, she'd have to go, wouldn't she? She'd, she'd be finished. I think she'd be toast. I think, she's, I think her days are numbered already after this um, catastrophe of a, of a general election that she called and then hid throughout. Um, I think she's got problems. I don't think she'll go immediately. I think the, if she did win, but with a reduced majority, I think what would happen is that she would have to get on with the negotiations. I don't think it's possible for, for some kind of internal Tory party leadership challenge in the middle of the Brexit negotiations. Ultimately though, her position has been weakened. You have to remember why she called this election. Mm. This no, it, no deal is better than a bad deal is complete boulder dash. Yeah, of course it is. It's, the whole election was called because she knows that we are going to have to have a deal and mm. it is going to be substantially um, less good than the deal that we have now. And it's also going to annoy a lot of Eurosceptics in her party. So she wanted to increase the kind of political legroom and room for mm. manoeuvre that she had, and that now might not happen. But also so if she's, you, you know, she's damaged goods in that sense. I mean, in that sense of being damaged goods, because she said, you know, this is about giving, making her stronger in EU negotiations, not that any EU leaders care how many seats she's got. But they will look, because they're not stupid, they'll look at the conduct of this general election campaign, whatever happens You now. do not have the support of your, of, you do not have the support of the British people behind you. You may well, have won a majority you, yeah. with, a, with a skewed electoral yeah. system, but actually, you know, but where also, is your big mandate? But also the U-turns, the inconsistency, the weakness, the hiding. Why would anyone take her seriously in negotiations? I don't... I don't... I think she's going to have a nightmare in those negotiations. It's not and actually, functioning. And I... <laughs> does not uh, compute! Uh, does uh, not compute! Uh, uh. Um, <laughs> but I actually think, you know, she's actually going to go into those negotiations weaker than when she started. Mm -hmm. What a nightmare! It's a nightmare for the country as yeah. well. You know, actually, I would say the person that can go into those negotiations with the best chance of getting the best deal for the people of this country is actually Jeremy Corbyn and the team around him. Because actually I think that the Europe would be far more inclined to do a, make a good deal with them mm -hmm. than they would with the Tories. Because at the moment, I think they're gonna to wanna to punish this country, punish Theresa May, punish the Conservative Party. So why should we all suffer because of that? But ultimately I think Theresa May is in a really, really bad place. And that means that the country's in a bad place. And so there is still the chance. We've got six, seven days now before the general election. People can still turn this around. We can still give ourselves a fighting chance to have a decent relationship with Europe mm -hmm. and a Labour government that will work for the many and not just a few. I think that's an opportunity you'd be mad to miss. But I would say that because I'm a Labour MP. Oh, no, I'm not. Not yet. No, I, don't. I would don't, say that because I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a Labour candidate. candidate. You heard the man. Come on, let's do this. Odds stacked against this, but we've seen the momentum. Go out, campaign, knock on doors, text, Facebook your friends, WhatsApp, Snapchat, whatever you call kids are doing now. Uh, and let's get out there. Let's spread the word. I'm going to go back to London now where I'll either be mugged and not appreciated. 
Fallon Partridge, it's, that's not me, it's a reference because we're Norwich. Um, we've got loads of interviews up here, probably, and uh, we've got loads of interviews to come on the other side of this historic general election. Let's see what these interviews will be about. Leave your comments as ever, subscribe, I'll see you next time.